Hello, welcome back. I'm Lorenzo. This is episode 39, um, excuse me, 49 of Tylo and Elu, where we explore Tylo and Elu. We find ourselves in the space center, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of lines here. Now, I'm always a fan of keeping old missions around, you know, they're a quaint reminder of ages past. But now it's coming to be such a hassle that I'm actually having trouble setting up maneuvers and recognizing what's out there. So, to summarize, or maybe reminisce over almost 50 episodes, let's go through the list and see what we do and do not need. Well, the Lunar Probe 1, which is landed, I think we can safely leave that there. That's a nice bit of history, 4 years and 300 days old. The Commercial Line, whatever that is, orbiting the moon, we can leave that there. Probe Elu, landed at Bob, magnificent achievement, we will leave that there. This is 4 years old. The backup probe, which is orbiting Tylo. This is, I think, our first piece of hardware on Tylo. And look at that, the heavy lander on Tylo actually has landed. This is already a few episodes ago. We're now currently working on solidifying our space infrastructure so we can send more stuff out here. But this is the first trailblazer. The voodoo scanner, which is orbiting the sun, actually still en route to Elu. We, of course, are not going to delete that. The credit set, which is orbiting Kerbin. Now this is something I would like to see. I think this is one that's launched for an agency, so we're going to leave that. Another credit set also orbiting Kerbin. And in, yeah, these are definitely agency orbits. This green orbit, by the way, is probably a contract we can accept, but haven't yet. Buster landed at the moon. Don't know what that is, but it seems it's a capsule. Let's have a look at Buster, shall we? And then also let's have a look at the contracts, because we haven't done a contract in a while, and while we're good in the money, and our orbital shipyard allows us cheap manufacturing, it's not. It's always smart to not neglect your contracts. I mean, it's very dark here. We have some fuel tanks, we have some... we have a scanner, and we have a capsule. There's no crew here though. I think someone was rescued from here at some point. This thing ran out of fuel. Yeah, I'm fairly sure that's what happened here. We'll leave that, that's a cool story. That's back to the space center. This was Buster. Don't worry, we'll get to the meat of the episode soon-ish. And I think I, I designed a policy on what to keep. I mean, if it's a... If it's a... If it's a thing like this, we're gonna keep it. But if it's like a piece of debris... We may have to get rid of it. On the other hand, we may only have to be smart about categorizing and maybe not showing all the probes. Although lots of things are probes. So let's let's go through the list more. The silo, this is a carbonite mining. Before I knew that carbonite rockets are incredibly unstable. Untitled spacecraft orbiting Kerbin. What the hell could that be? The iLook probe? This was a clever name which I forgot. The base lander for Elu. This is still en route to Elu. I think. There was an encounter set up there. Base lander at moon. The base lander at the moon is actually landed at the moon. This this thing was forgotten. Let's have a look at it. I, I don't know what's up with that. So probably got lost in betwixt several axed programs. Is this actually an extraplanetary launch pad? A pioneer module. And a liquid fuel engine. What the hell is up here? Some comm dishes. Oh yeah, this is aerodynamic because it was at some point launched. This still has this has fuel, this is ready to go. We can put a logistics module next to this and start building houses. Well, not building houses with the logistics module, but this is still a perfectly serviceable start for a base. We'll... Well, we'll keep that in mind for when the asteroids start falling. We can come and live here. I think our, our sites have been shifted to Minmus because we're mining there now and we, I could envision breaking up the orbital shipyard and actually shipping that out to Minmus. If our fuel mining operation there is successful, then we only need to ship in occasional supply boosts from Kerbin, nothing else. Which is actually fairly um, attractive. 
Then we have Gleesey's Debris, which is landed at Minmus. We can leave that. Everything that's at Minmus, we can just leave there. Landed at Ike. Nice um, achievement there. Landed at Duna. Nice little thing. Adam landed at Eve. Clever. Haha. <laughs> the future. We cannot ditch that. That's orbiting Kerbin. I would like to change that into a um, into 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 an actual station icon at some point, which I never seem to be able to do. Gilly Eater still en route. Actually, it's not that bad with all the. This actually m makes a frightening amount of sense how much stuff we're, we still might use. So, no big cleansing action. Then what? On to Science Base Omega. This is what I built in the interim between this and the last episode. Well, not the whole base, but I attached another module. And that is the Kerbin Training Academy. That's it. Ah, it's, it's dark everywhere I go. What the hell? Orbital Mechanics isn't favoring this recording. Here we go. Here's some sunlight. See, look at that. We have a nice cobbled together station. A defunct particle collector, which doesn't have anything to collect here. A workspace with nothing to work on. A pioneer module, which has not enough crew on it. We need, ha we need to have crew in here. Um, it was researching, but now it's not anymore because our chief scientist is in the training academy. And if I hit conduct training, nothing happens. So, not quite sure what that's about. But we have this guy in here. At some point. Yeah. Module crew, one of twelve. EVA. I think this incidentally might make the... Might make the training academy the most efficient transfer vehicle for lots of kerbins. Uh, kerbals. I'm not quite sure about that, but twelve is a lot. I'm now just putting Rodgar here back into the, the science module. Because maybe there's there need to be more Kerbals in class. Or maybe you need a, a one high start Kerbal to, to do some training. I will elucidate on what I want to do with this station in a second. Let's first put this guy in here. And he can start researching. Look, we got 0.05 science a day. That's not a lot, but it is science. So we, we will leave him in there and leave him to science. He's got a house as well attached to the training academy some docking clamps and an engine. Now at some point we might attach more science modules here, uh, additional laboratories and all that good stuff, but for now we have one Kerbal here. We have a rocket standing by on Kerbin to launch a second scientist and as soon as the command module is complete in 40 days I'm going to make a big transfer vehicle that will take a lot of Kerbals from the orbital shipyard, ship them back to Kerbin so their experience can trigger and they can see their families and then I'm going to redistribute them, launch some of them here and some of them back to the orbital shipyard or maybe even to the Minmus fueling operation because hey, we're uh, flush with money so we can build some crew launches. Speaking of the Minmus refueling operation, uh, let's have a look at that. We're actually going to do something there apart from Procetilizing, yes, that's a word about what is going to happen in the future. We're actually going to do something right the hell now, and it's going to be a rather fun, I think. So, to recap the problem in this setup, where this bit at the top is the fuel miner of the ore miner, which then ferries the ore back into orbit where it's refined, that fatally fails to take into account that ore is a lot heavier than fuel. I can rationalize this by saying that not all the ore is fuel and that you may discard three quarters of it or whatever. Anyway, in the game it is the case. So the new plan is to attach this uh, processor to the lander, land that and leave it, repurpose these tanks as a orbital depot. We may have to launch a house for a Kerbal and some docking ports or we may just leave it like this. I mean, it doesn't really have to do anything apart from hold some fuel um, and then land a um, what is what's it called? Land a uh, logistics hub next to it so refueling becomes easier. That's also an experiment of new technology. Now to do that we are going to dismantle all of this and before doing that we're going to redistribute some fuel and I'm really not happy with the way this lander controls so I really won't mind uh, not having to land with that anymore. 
We're give, gonna give it some mono propellant because this thing does have. Wait, actually, this makes no sense because we're gonna bring these tanks, so we can just leave that as is. Let's transfer a bit of that back. No, we'll just leave it as is. It's not going to be too unbalancing, and Minimus is very light. So, first things first, we're gonna attach these two things. So, we're gonna uncouple here. Now remember, our Kerbal is in the minor, so we're going to now just engage reverse thrust a bit. It doesn't, it's not that critical because this thing also is remote controllable. Right, so. Now we're going to uncouple this bit. Yeah, camera is going a little bit crazy. Let's activate SAS again let's get let's take a look at our mono propellant we don't have that much of it let's get some sideways motion going here you see the ship is drifting and tilting because I didn't build it right let's compensate for set sideways motion and go a little bit forward past the fuel tanks and then to target come on target the fuel station gamma please which will, is soon to be fuel station, well, fuel lander, really. Set the docking port as a target and approach. Now we're kinda drifting sideways past the fuel tanks, which isn't the best way to go, not really. But we are sort of managing. Let's, let's see, let's not try any crazy maneuvers, let's just stop here. Stop, of course, being relative to our target. Um, there's no such thing as actually stopping in space. So I'll leave this here with no SAS on because that would make things too easy. Switch to this craft and then actually just angle this to point to that. And incidentally, this is what I've been doing mm, lots of times when I've been saying, oh, we'll reconvene later. Uh, see you when I've done all the tedious stuff. Um, as you may notice, I am sort of good at it by now. This is not the most complicated docking. Uh, it will not take too much time. And I thought it would be nice to show you what the hell I am uh, up to all these hours, really. I spent a frightening amount of time on these videos. Fortunately, I like it. It's not a chore. <laughs> oh god, look, now you just wait and until the magnetism of the clamps take over. You can push a little bit with some RCS thrust. There you go. And now we have a conundrum, a small one. We have two engines. We're gonna use this one and not this one. So we're gonna dismantle it because Lamalt Kerman is an engineer. And that's something engineers can do, I've heard. Let's see. Let's go on over to this engine. Scrap the part. Ooh, and we, we could have gotten recyclables. I, mean, I haven't figured out the mechanics for that, but this is something that could have been done, apparently. But this saves about 1.5 tons of weight. Of course, it also costs an engine, so you have to be fairly sure you want to get... You, wa you actually want to get rid of the part. And now we get to the question of, is this thing even space-worthy anymore? Can we go ahead and land it? Well, let's first and foremost put our fuel into the lander and we immediately see that something has been forgotten by me actually a lot has been forgotten by me um, I will tell you the critical error I have now made and the error is as such um, this thing is not full of fuel that thing is oops I'm not gonna go back and get it I could I could undock this and get I should go back and get it shouldn't I can this thing be controlled? Yeah, this has this has a, a autonomous driver. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and get the fuel. I'm not an idiot. So uh, this thing has docking ports on both sides. Let's face one of them towards towards that n craft that's needed your fuel. Look, the bars appear empty but because these tanks are so huge, they're actually pretty full of fuel. Now, and we're gonna get to the point that I'm again gonna say I'm not gonna expose you to all this drudgery of docking because we're basically going to do the same thing you just saw, but twice again. Um, so... 
I am in fact going to cut the video again and then then show you the fuel I got because I'm I'm I don't have a good intuitive feeling for the weight of the resource processor and there's also the question of the huge the pretty huge additional weight of the the excess oxidizer that's still on board there so I am going to go ahead and fix it because look at there's lots of fuel here and lots of space to leave the excess oxidizer so as I said cutting the video I will be back with you pronto right and there we are about what was it 10 minutes of docking later oh someone at the door excuse the interruption that was a very inopportune moment to um, receive a package which is what the problem was Although not really a problem, the actual problem is an infestation of mice. I friggin' hate those cute little creatures. Um, yeah, that's a change of subject. No, what happened in my house is that there's now mice living there and I ordered from the mighty internet uh, quite literally every product you can have to kill them. As I said in previous episodes, I've used swords to... Um, limited success. The actual uh, fatality count on behalf of the sword hunting method is still zero. But yeah, now I've got yeah, you're now I'm I better not not elaborate on um what methods I'm using here because there is um many people that don't agree with them, but they have to get out of my house. That's the point. Anyway, back to good old sci-fi gaming. Here we have a Minmus Miner platform. I still didn't get rid of the excess oxidizer, but I remembered when I was at the station that I didn't bring it, so now the excess is slightly less. We have lots of fuel and a very unwieldy lander. Let's see what we can get done with that. First, let's time warp to... what? what do we have here? Wait, first let's name our things properly. We have here... this is not going to come apart anymore, so we can name it properly. This is now a base, and this is um, roughneck. Oh, not with those letters. Roughneck grinding station. Station M. That's not gay at all. Roughneck refers to oil drillers. Nothing else. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, and we've got this. This is still fuel station gamma, I think. No, this is the station. Fuel Station Gamma. Here we go. Right. Our nomenclature is now clear. Let's proceed to a... <laughs> Let's proceed with landing Roughneck Grinding Station M. I, I didn't do it on purpose, honest. <laughs> it's... I thought Roughnecks for oil drillers and grinding because they'll be doing ore mining and grinding up the ore. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> honest. Alright, let's leave it at that. Um, let's try and find a landing site. I could go for the lakes, but they're in the in the dark now. So I'm just going to go try and land here, wherever here is. So let's angle our thing retrograde. This is quite scary. Um, there is a lot of uh, RCS authority on this vessel, but not a lot of RCS fuel. So actually, I think I'm going to shut off the RCS and do most of my steering the horrible way um, with engine power and tiny reaction wheels because I didn't bring the big ones. Um, what? I'm controlling it from the wrong orientation. Control from here, yes. Alright, another swing around. I'm tempted to cut the video again but I have a feeling that this landing will be spectacular in some way or form. Success is absolutely not guaranteed. I hope the mod will survive at least, but uh, even that's not a given. The next steps after this, assuming the landing is successful, is to put um, is to put logistics hub here and on the orbital shipyard. On the orbital shipyard, is because we'll be building it there anyway, and it's a good test bed for how this thing actually works. And then we're gonna build a lander because the thing is atrociously heavy. It weighs. Oh, my engine is still on. Uh, it weighs 15 tons for a single module. Um, it's not too much to land on Minmus, certainly, but it is it is a frighteningly large amount. 
something else that's frightening is that we absolutely require RCS to keep this thing oriented properly in, in the descent. The engine doesn't have enough gimbal authority. The reaction wheels are basically non-existent. Um, and the RCS is very, very limited. So let's try here, whilst we're still technically in space, let's try and not use any of it. Also, I hope my sort of randomly selected landing site will be good in ore. Although that doesn't really matter because we have all the time in the world. But mostly good in flat landscape. So we need that more than anything else. In the real world, adapting a piece of d uh, hardware like this would be hugely problematic. Not in the least part because we're now using it upside down. Although, it would be more accurate to say we're now using it in a gravity well um, instead of in freefall because of course it's not technically upside down if it didn't have an upside to begin with. And this really didn't because it was manufactured in space, it never had an up. How's that? Alright. Concent concentrate now, concentrate now, concentrate. I'm now trying to steer with just the engine gimbal for steering authority and I can tell that this is quite a lot heavier than well, than just a lander with no fuel in it, which is of course bleedingly obvious, but still. You, know, you may wonder why I'm not retracting the solar panels. Proper landing procedure would probably have the solar panels retracted, but because I'm lazy and didn't bind them to action groups, and I think maybe you cannot even have persistent action groups over over multiple undockings and vessel reconfigurations but you know they're quite sturdy they'll be fine uh, let's switch this to surface mode actually and we're at five kilometers now minimus landings are always so dreadfully slow but this thing is so uncontrollable it's probably i'm i'm estimating chances of success at about 80 percent i mean i'm fairly confident that everything will be fine but it is not guaranteed, not in the slightest. Does this look flat? Doesn't look flat to me, actually. Well, we have at least plenty of fuel for an abort. But if we do an abort, we're gonna have to send a uh, RCS tug out here to refill the RCS tanks. And that's not very nice, because I want to get this fuel station going pretty badly. There's the sun. Our shadow will be coming up straight from below. Um, I'm deeming this as, as sufficiently flat. Alright, here we go. RCS on. Let's do it in subtle mode. Pro tip, if you didn't know, you can hit caps lock and then the controls become more fine and it also means that a key press equals less RCS fuel spent. Of course it also means less force applied, but if you tend to overcorrect always, try hitting caps lock before making your delicate maneuver. The, you can see the indicators here turn blue. That means they are now in precision mode. And I'm now using RCS to stay steady. It's actually going pretty well. Let's see about reducing our descent velocity to a few meters per second. Let's see if we can find an engine throttle setting that will... Th that's the problem with a, a very low gravity and a fairly punchy engine, is that at the lowest possible setting you're not actually hovering, you're accelerating upwards. So you're you're basically going down in, in little jumps. Where you accelerate a little bit, cut your engine, and then decelerate a little bit. In reality this is um, almost never possible because most rocket engines have a trouble restarting many many times. Fortunately in the game this is not an issue. Alright, off precision mode, use full thrusters to stabilize. 25 RCS fuel left, all right. Here we are, still wobbling, still wobbling, but fairly stable. Look at this contraption, it, this is horrible. For all intents and purposes, this is horrible. But, here's the big but. What we can do, 
after no we can't do it. I was gonna say after the logistics hub is here we can land this next to it but then the refinery and the ore tanks wouldn't be connected anymore. This is something we could try and do with like a EVA uh, fuel lines thing but for now we're gonna leave this as a stack and actually engage the drillomatic drilling devices because this if it's still stable means that we can start fueling this up start the harvester and actually this double dose of solar panels might just be able to sustain this harvesting rate it can't but it just barely can't alright ore is coming in let's activate the refinery monopropellant first because we need that for stabilization should anything weird happen um, and also liquid fuel and oxidizer says it's missing ore doesn't matter we're gonna leave this here and in the background this will continue yes alright we have a grinding station M and now we need a logistics module with that so to do that let's move to Kerbin I'm going to tab through lots of celestial bodies here we go Kerbin science base Omega that's that's still that still has a Kerbal to to launch to it. We're gonna switch to it and try to properly label this as well because I want to be able to find it and I don't want to be rooting around in the bases tab. Right. Rename vessel. Looking for the rename vessel button. I have a suspicion that I may have to add a pioneer module to this thing to get the the proper functions working. And big many 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 apologies to whoever already mentioned this in the comments um, I'm currently have a fairly big backlog of episodes that have been recorded but not uploaded or uh, released yet so if any of you s have said in the last like six episodes like hey you, sh you need a, a pioneer module for it and all your woes will be over I have not actually heard that yet but still keep the comments coming um, I don't know where I can rename this thing. There's probably a, a probe core hidden somewhere in these arcane devices. Rename vessel. Here we go. It's a station. Boom. That's that. Oh yeah, and of course we want to do something with that station. We want to build the logistics module. This is the addition for the station itself because I would relish the opportunity to not have to dock the next freighter. Although, wait a second. If I'm not docking the freighters anymore, I'm gonna need a, a rocket part attachment as well. So I can't quite build this yet. We're gonna go to the space center. If you've lost me, let me explain. Up till now, I've been sending big freighters full of water and rocket parts up to the space station to build craft in orbit. This is nice, but it requires lots of maneuvering and docking and time. Um, although, once they're up there, they serve as a rocket part depot from which the orbital shipyard gets to draw rocket parts. If I want to convert the station to have a flyby um, refueling, say without docking, so this is what the logistics module does, then I'm going to need more storage for the rocket parts because this ship itself is not going to be attached. So let's grab the Logistron and actually add that. Uh, where is the Logistron? I bet that the, the thing is now going to be called Logistron Station or something and be called a rover. Uh, here we go, Logistron. We need a big container of rocket parts. I could use the hex can. I've used this for seven times huge. That's 20k. Is there something larger which I may use? Preferably something with a low empty mass so it doesn't require too much rocket parts to build itself. Here we have something. 2000. That carries 2000 quite predictably. That is no comparison with the big massive hex can this weighs 4.2 right so we're gonna put that at the bottom why not and then the RCS stuff here this come on a small RCS tank just for maneuvering it 
two there. Let's bring up the center of mass again. This is now, of course, way off as to what it was before. And we will put our RCS thrusters balanced around the center of mass about here. This should be workable to just get it from the shipyard to one of the docking ports. I, th I would say so. Requires 8,000 rocket parts, so it's huge. Huge. The, I think this is the most expensive thing built yet. And it's only four parts. But it will add a lot of functionality to our lives. My life especially, because now I've been doing all of this off camera. But, well, my life is important too. Deal with it. Right, back to the future. Never gets old. And this is now properly labeled a station, yes? Yes, cool. And I think if I remember my supplies right, let's see how it, how is the supply situation. Supplies are all pretty low and water is completely gone and rocket parts we have how uh, much of that? 6k, so it could be worse. But it's definitely not enough to to build the Logistron. Fortunately, I have already commissioned a, a resupply ship. Although I'm not sure if that if that actually carries supplies, but it will carry rocket parts and water. So we're gonna build this. Cool. And the Kerbal Alarm Clock doesn't seem to add everything from here anymore. Look, because we have the Science Boy ready. That's actually the, the shuttle for the scientists to the to Science Base Omega. And the Supply Queen will happen in 12 days. But they used to get entries here. Filter this to current vessel. No, no. Um, cool. Speaking of the Science Boy, let's go ahead and launch that. To bring an additional scientist to the space base Omega. Science base Omega, apologies. Uh, let's pick out an astronaut. Let's let's do our ground stuff. We have contracts available. A new surface outpost on Minmus. We actually want to have this, right? Five Kerbals, we don't want that. An outpost on Minmus. Do we want to, la to land a pioneer base? And we don't want to put five Kerbals there, so it's not going to happen. Or from Luna to Ike, that's never mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. Recovery unit. There may be a problem. Oh shit, if we accept this, we get electric propulsion early. Test this, landed at Vol. If I'm... Yes! We're gonna get this because that means we can uh, send a big spaceship full of ion drives to the dual system. Yes, yes, yes. We want this, and it will make us rich. Cool. Accept this. Uh -huh. Boom. I'm gonna design that. Some. I'm gonna design something massive. All right. A scientist to send. Uh, we're gonna send Leaf. We rescued her from a floating nuclear reactor. That's easy. Leaf going to space. Um, yes, launching, launching, launching. Uh, we have the VAB. Science Boy is going to carry leaf. That's nice. It's um, not gender specific, as you can see. And then, yeah, this will all take days. I think this is going to be the last bit of this episode where we launch leaf to the station. And then in the next episode, we will forge on with landing logistics modules on. Uh, Minmus and uh, and the station, but let me ponder that a little while longer. Uh, not Hutnand, no Leaf. Launch this. This is a this is a savage rocket, and I will show you. This is a fun rocket. This is a, a ludicrous one. All right, let's target. The, let's find the science base. We're basically just going to fly it straight to it. So let's first wait until it's sort of overhead. There we go, science base Omega. All right, leave, make us proud. Here we go. 
the rocket. It's really small, as you can see. We're just gonna fly off. Boom. Going. Let's zoom out. I like that view a lot better. So we're going to punch it for supersonic and then throttle back a little bit. Because if we don't, things could get dangerous. Actually, let's throttle back now because we're at 3 Gs. 250 meters per second and not uh, not above 3 kilometers. That's a v fairly tough area to be. And I forgot to pitch over, so that's not happening now. Let's zoom back in to have a look at that. Um, we are now supersonic. Let's throttle back a little bit more. For those of you uninitiated in the advanced art of thermo uh, uh, aerodynamics, not thermodynamics, apologies there, to lots of scientists, Apparently, through some kind of witchcraft, air gets a lot less resisty as you go supersonic. If you go faster than sound, the air lets you through better. Um, don't dare ask me the details, but it's true. So it's, it's always important to immediately accelerate past supersonic speeds, which is also the po point at which most of your rockets will explode and disintegrate and just feel horribly unwell. And then you can uh, let off the throttle a bit. Now we're a bit higher again and the air is starting to disappear completely. Although not too not not really completely yet. It's still trying trying its darndest to, to steer my rocket of course. Of course. For this we will apply more engine power. Here we go. Full boost. Leaf is now being lurched towards science base Omega at the better part of 7 G's. Actually almost 7 G's. We're just blasting up to orbital speed here. Um, actually, we are almost at orbital speed. We're so fast at 47 kilometers, we're basically shutting off the rocket now to, well, to plot our plot our intersection already because, well, we're almost up there. Let's see. Can we make an intersect happen easily, or do we have to do it the hard way? This this does re resemble the hard way. I think I think I am already going too fast to make a nice quick rendezvous happen. What ha what happens if I if I turn around and break a little bit? It's really stupid, but let's try. Yeah, no, that's not <laughs> gonna happen. Um, guess what? The stupid thing actually was stupid. What happens if I do it like this? Ah, God, I thought I, I picked a nice... I thought I picked a nice point for a um, for a rendezvous, but apparently that wasn't the case at all. Right, let's go through a slightly higher arc, so we can at least meet up quickly. No. No shenanigans. We're just going to establish a, a simple orbit first, and then we'll worry about the rest of the of the mission. We're already at 100 kilometers. That means we can ditch this fairing. As you can see, this ship is incredibly simple. It has a few solar panels. Uh, hey, it it carries supplies even. Look at that. That's uh, excessive because it doesn't carry any docking utensils. So these supplies will die with the ship. Anyway, time to establish orbit. A very short rocket boost. Blast strong. Whoa, 10 G's. Hello. Hello, fairing. That was uh, fairly dangerous. Alright, we can maybe even make an intersect happen here. Let's do a little bit more blasting. Blast, blast, blast. No. 70 kilometers. How's our fuel situation looking? Actually, our fuel situation is more than fine. This has almost nothing remaining. What happens if we try rendezvous? Ah, oh, look at that, that's perfect. Apart from the fact that this is not actually an orbit. What if I make this an orbit? What? Oh, I'm pulling the wrong cord. Am I projecting an air of proficient rocketry? That's the question. Oh, this is actually an actual periapsis. This is not. Oh, damn it. I can make a nice rendezvous, but it does mean that I'm apparently not going to be able... Oh, look. This is looking better. 55. 
a wizard told me, you can apparently also calculate these things, but trial and error is better. So here we have an encounter 5 kilometers with a periapsis that's actually livable. And I think this is going to be an energy inefficient trajectory. Fairly sure it is, but I think we have the Delta V to spare to do it this way. And otherwise we have an immediate rescue mission, which is of course not what we want. But hey, there is more things in the world we don't want. Right. So that's 5 minutes gone again. Um time warping to that illustrious rocket booster point. We're pointing frighteningly at the planet. Let's double check. Is this gonna work? Yeah. Boost. And that's that for the stage. Stage. More boost. Decidedly more gentle this time. Oh yeah, look at that. We have the advanced avionics pack, a product of our science. This unlocks lots of cool tools for our non-pilots because the Leaf is a scientist and we can now even do um, target and target the maneuver nodes and stuff which is hugely useful all of it. Alright, let's do the solar panels. Let's also stop thrusting towards the planet because we will explode. Alright, we did it almost, a little bit more. Twenty-two kilometers. This is actually becoming quite horrif horrifically large arc. Um, yeah, let's warp there. Let's warp there and make the rendezvous. Now we don't have to do a precision docking because, um, well, Leaf is a fully trained space. Uh, at least we'll pretend she's fully trained. We found her in space, so I think she's fully space trained. We found her in space, inhabiting a nuclear reactor. Maybe we best not question too too much what she's up to. Is this our target? Where is our target? Yeah, I think I think so. Distance? No, distance ten kilometers. It's got to be closer. Yeah, that's it. Speed difference two hundred meters per second. We're in the dark because of course we are, but we won't be much longer because we have a relative velocity of hundred meters per second which we're gonna kill now and we're gonna change that to a well an approaching velocity of well let's also make that 100 meters per second oh I love flying small craft they're so nice and nimble I mean orbital maneuverings at like five or six meters per second is very nice if you're flying freighters but if you're flying small shuttles with big engines sure just blast towards them at full boosting capacity. Uh, let's also break, because otherwise it's still going to be difficult to, to get Leaf on board. Right on. Swinging it around. Now what I'm gonna try, because we, we want to get rid of our space junk, obviously, because we need people. This thing has SAS. What I'm gonna do is fire the engine on a retrograde trajectory. Wait, this thing has SAS. Does it also have remote control? Did I put that in? This thing is not remote control. But that is, yeah. This thing has remote control. We can just... What I was going to say is I'm going to uh, turn on the engine in a retrograde attitude and then just quickly get Leaf out. But that's very hazardous. Instead, we can get leaf out and then fly this thing into into the ground itself which is a lot better from leaf's perspective right time to get leaf out and do just those things i have said lights on please apologies for the horrific darkness i hope you're not afraid in it the dark that is um but we do get the benefit of seeing this science base omega appear in headlights i think we're going pretty fast. Let's slow down a bit. Here we go. Let's put Leaf in the Kerbal Training Academy. I wonder if the Training Academy might need like a professor, like a Kerbal with lots of stars, to, to teach those starry ways to other Kerbals. Would make some sort of sense. Oh god, this is a very hard place to board. Alright, let's not board the 
training academy then. Let's go and board the science container. Or whatever that is supposed to be called. The pioneer module. A very bombastic name. Uh, unfortunately this is also in the wrong attitude. Can we board it here? Because some, for some reason, boarding things on top of spaceships is a lot easier than bo boarding them on the bottom. Disregarding the fact that spaceships don't have a top and a bottom. Right, now to crash this. Target it retrograde. Full thrust. Bye bye space capsule. Periapsis of nothing. Actually, that makes little sense. This is a perfectly fine runabout. We could have used it forever in orbit to shuttle Kerbals to places. It even has lots of supplies. So, this was quite a waste. But as we saw at the beginning of the episode, there um, already exist many, many pieces of hardware which are hardly ever used or revisited. And this thing was cheap, and it wasn't built out of very hard to get rocket parts. This was blasted off from the ground, and these ground mission controllers, they are wasteful. So what's the, what's the menu for the, for the next episode? Off screen, I'm going to do the following. I'm gonna, going to build and attach the Logistron. That's going to be there when you next check in. To that end, I'm going to launch the Supply Queen and dock that with the new station for those juicy supplies. After that, the... Is the research already complete? After that, the command modules are going to be nearing completion because this takes 10 days and then a few days for that. And, well, the days go quickly. And then we're going to do some Kerbal Shuffling and some upgrading of the logistics. Well, that's that for this module. And I think next episode is also going to be a point where we should re-add some launch windows to Tylo and Elu, um, since that's going to become interesting soon with our massive space infrastructure. Oh, and I'm going to design ion-powered probes for a big massive journey to the dual system for which we'll use those launch windows. So that's what I'm planning for the next episode, number 50, if you can believe it. So, thanks for watching today. See you next time. I'm Lorenzo. Goodbye. Have a nice day.